Today's video is sponsored by Lux Luger. This is an up-and-coming jewelry company. Links in the description. Here's the thing, they only sell moissanite stones in their pieces that will pass the diamond tester. Yup, you heard right. They have everything from rings, chains, earrings, to custom pieces. For the fraction of the cost, you can shine like your favorite entertainers. Use promo code WOTS to get 25% off these already cheap items, considering. I got the earrings. Who knows? If they start making sales using my promo code, they might drop the prices with the next promo. Go get yours, check that link. Enough of that though. Okay, we back in Trenton, New Jersey. This time, we're talking about something much more current. Trenton has emerged as an unexpected but vibrant hub for drill music, a subgenre of hip-hop known for its raw and gritty lyrics, heavy bass, and aggressive beats. Rooted in the experiences of street life, the Trenton drill scene captures the unique culture and struggles of the city's youth. Artists from Trenton are known for their unapologetic storytelling, reflecting the hardships, aspirations, and daily realities they face. Much like its counterparts in Chicago and New York, Trenton's drill music is characterized by a dark, minimalist sound, but it incorporates a distinct local flavor that reflects the city's diverse cultural makeup and history. The community has embraced the genre as a form of expression and a means of putting Trenton on the map in the broader hip-hop landscape. The Trenton drill scene continues to grow, attracting attention from major labels and promising a unique voice in the world of hip-hop. The drill music community in Trenton is also becoming a vehicle for social commentary, reflecting broader issues like economic disparity, violence, and the pursuit of dreams amidst adversity. As the genre evolves, Trenton's drill scene is becoming a crucial piece of the American hip-hop mosaic. One of those rappers is G. Skino, who has been making waves in the local and regional music scenes. He hails from H. Block, which is located in the vicinity of Hewitt and Division. The loss of their fallen brother would be one of the driving forces in his rap career. In July 2017, 15-year-old Kyler Bragg was shot in the head. He was pronounced dead at about 10 a.m. at Capitol Health Regional Medical Center, where he was taken following the 9.45 p.m. shooting at Division and Hewitt Streets. He was shot in front of 631, the residents behind him and this picture. In addition to Bragg, a 16-year-old boy was shot in the arm, another 16-year-old boy was wounded in the thigh, and a 16-year-old girl was struck in the shoulder and back. They suffered non-life-threatening wounds. Authorities believed the four victims were together at the intersection when they were targeted because the shooter or shooters thought the teens had robbed them. Police officials said two of the teens apparently fired back as they ran from the initial gunfire. Bullet casings were scattered over a large area when Trenton police officers arrived to the shooting scene. G. Skino was about 14 at the time, and according to him, four days after Kai died, he claims he was arrested for murder. The situation is unclear, but it involved guns and someone died. However, he obviously beat that charge. He also claims that throughout his tenure as a gangster, he has been shot six times on three different occasions. Anyway, in the months following Kai Kai's death, he, along with fellow rapper Ken Love, would drop the song, Seen It All. This would be the start of his career, and the song is a Trenton classic. From here on, G. Skino would continue to drop music. At the time, he was going by Skino and hadn't added the G to his name yet. But by November of that year, 2017, he would get into another situation. Them and three other teens were charged with weapons offenses after police found a stash of paintball guns in their vehicle, following a search for suspects who shot a man in the eye with one. The victim was wearing glasses, but the paintball scratched his cornea and he ended up in the hospital. G. Skino, 18 at the time, Ja, 19, Zaire, 18, and Rick, 19, were found in possession of several paintball guns after police set up a perimeter to stop their car following a shooting on Center Street. Officials say police first encountered the group on Virginia Avenue around 2.30 a.m. when cops noticed a dark-colored Audi parked on the wrong side of the road. As cops approached the car to investigate further, the driver sped away. During the subsequent car chase, officials say the driver ignored a stop sign and eventually evaded capture. About 45 minutes later, cops were sent to Center Street to assist a 27-year-old man who was shot in the eye with a paintball. The victim told police he was walking when he heard a car behind him. The car then stopped, the victim said, and someone rolled down the window and shot him with a paintball gun. 
The driver then sped away. He was shot with a blue paintball. The victim told police the car was a dark-colored Audi, and cops saw the vehicle again on Greenwood Avenue around 3.20 a.m. When police finally stopped the car, they allegedly found blue paintballs scattered across the rear floorboard. Additionally, the barrel of a handgun protruded from the center armrest, according to police. Detectives also found several firearms inside the trunk of the car, according to officials who say all of the weapons were paintball guns. Police confiscated the guns and charged a foursome with weapons offenses. Not sure what came out of that situation, but two months later, G. Skino would find himself back in trouble with the law. January, 2018. Three men were arrested during a drug raid on a city home. Officials said the two-month investigation focused on a drug distribution operation being run out of a home in the 1200 block of Ohio Avenue. During the morning raid, which took place on a Friday, police found a semi-automatic handgun, 50 grams of crack cocaine, 7 grams of marijuana, oxycodone pills and $3,594 in cash, which was seized as suspected proceeds from narcotic sales. G. Skino and two elders of his family, 46 and 49, were all inside the house, which was also their place of residence, according to police. Each of them were charged with numerous drug possession and distribution offenses. The 39-year-old Brian was also charged with gun possession. Six months later, in June of 2018, G. Skino would again be in trouble with the law. 18 at the time, he along with 19-year-old Isaac Fisher, were arrested after police seized crack cocaine and prescription pills during a traffic stop on Perry Street. Officials say cops initially encountered the pair after seeing Fisher driving carelessly. Police say the duo jumped out of the car and tried to quickly walk away when they saw cops, which ended with police searching them and finding the drugs. You can see his sack here in the video with G. Skino. He put in his fair share of work, being arrested in 2017 for being a part of a trio that shot a 17-year-old on Whitaker Street. Now, 2021 would be a busy year dealing with law enforcement, as G. Skino would be hit with wild charges stemming from two different offenses, a murder in May 2018 and an attempt murder in October 2019. He and others involved were already incarcerated on other charges. In fact, multiple members of the gang were taken down. January 14, 2021. The Mercer County prosecutor announced that a six-month multi-jurisdictional investigation of narcotics distribution and violent crime in the Mercer County area has culminated with the arrest of 18 individuals and the seizure of approximately 1,000 grams of heroin, 1,000 grams of methamphetamine, 15 pounds of marijuana, 11 guns, 6 vehicles, and more than $22,000 in cash. The drugs had an estimated value of at least a quarter million dollars. Law enforcement began their hard-hitting investigation a short time later and dubbed the job Operation 8-Ball, representing the 8-Ball logo used by Trenton's H-Block, the violent criminal street gang responsible for numerous shootings and murders in the city. According to the prosecutor, the initial investigation focused on the alleged drug activities of H-Block and through informant information, controlled buys, surveillances and intelligence, authorities were able to obtain and execute more than 40 warrants of individuals, vehicles and locations in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. On November 4, 2020, search warrants were executed and arrests were made as this investigation progressed. On this day, an undercover officer made arrangements to purchase a quantity of heroin from Joseph Kate. After conducting the narcotics transaction with the undercover detective at a gas station on North Olden Avenue in Trenton, detectives attempted to arrest Kate, however, he fled in his vehicle. When detectives attempted to stop Kate, he collided with a police vehicle, causing heavy damage to both vehicles. He then attempted to flee on foot but was apprehended after a brief struggle. Also arrested inside the vehicle were Vincent Bowman and Zaire Jones. Search warrants related to the investigation were subsequently executed and detectives located 30 bricks of heroin and a shotgun. At an apartment on Beak Street in Trenton, detectives located evidence related to murder of Derek Coley that resulted in homicide charges being filed against Kate and Tabaka Hale. At approximately 3.40 p.m. on October 5, 2020, the Trenton police received a call for a male shot inside a deli market in the 200 block of Spring Street. Upon arrival, police found Derek Coley, 26, bleeding from multiple gunshots wounds. He was pronounced dead at the scene. 
Officers located numerous 40 and 45 shell casings scattered inside the deli market, primarily in the rear of the store. Detectives reviewed video surveillance footage from the area and observed a silver Hyundai Genesis circle the area prior to the shooting and immediately following the shooting of Coley. Prior to the murder, the silver Hyundai Genesis traveled down Spring Street before it turned left onto White Street. Two black males are seen exiting the vehicle, both wearing hoodies over their heads and both appearing to be wearing gloves. A third male remained in the driver's seat of the vehicle. The two males are observed entering the store, both with handguns in their hands, and a store clerk and customer are observed running out of the store toward Prospect Street. Coley is seen standing in the rear left side of the store and began to walk to the right side. He looked down the aisle closest to him and observed one of the gunmen walking down the aisle with a gun raised. Coley started to run down the second aisle, but was unable to do to the second gunman who began to fire his handgun at Coley. Coley then ran to the rear of the store where he fell and was shot multiple times. Both gunmen ran from the store and go into the Hyundai Genesis, which flees the scene. The lookup of the silver Hyundai Genesis's registration revealed the vehicle was reported stolen out of Trenton between October 1 and October 2. Further investigation revealed that Kate and Hale were the gunmen. Following Kate's arrest, search warrants were executed at his residence on Russell Avenue and at an apartment on Beak Street. During the search of Kate's residence, an AR-15 style rifle with an extended magazine, various ammunition, various firearm magazines and heroin were located. A black Cadillac that was also used in connection with the homicide was recovered and was impounded pending a search warrant. The investigation continued into 2021 and search warrants were executed at locations in Trenton and Ewing, New Jersey, and Bristol and Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Prior to the execution of these warrants, surveillance officers followed Deshaun Abner as he traveled by cab from Bond Street in Trenton to the extended stay motel on Route 1 in West Windsor, where Abner and a second individual, identified as Aziz Stroman, were observed searching a wooded area around the hotel. After searching the area for about 30 minutes, Abner was seen retrieving a box containing 210 bricks of heroin from the bushes in the hotel parking lot. After retrieving the package, Abner entered the Mercedes Ben Stroman had arrived in, and the two men departed the area. Arrest teams converged on the area, and both Abner and Stroman were eventually detained after attempting to flee. A search warrant for Stroman's Mercedes Benz was obtained, and detectives located 210 bricks of heroin on the front passenger floor. Both Abner and Stroman were charged with first degree narcotic offenses. After Abner and Stroman were taken into custody, detectives contacted officers in Pennsylvania who had an individual identified as Ricardo Moaz under observation. Through the investigation, authorities had pinpointed Moaz as the supplier of heroin to North Trenton. At that time, Moaz was seen moving items out of his apartment on Beaver Street in Bristol Township, and detectives from the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, with assistance from Bucks County District Attorney's Office and the Bristol Borough Police Department, arrested him for outstanding warrants as a result of distributing 75 bricks of heroin to an undercover officer in the spring of 2020. Search warrants were subsequently executed at related locations. According to the prosecutor, the total retail value of the confiscated drugs was $228,000. The heroin was valued at $60,000, the methamphetamine was valued at $100,000, and the marijuana at $68,000. In addition to the narcotics, authorities also seized 11 guns, 6 vehicles and approximately $22,000 in cash. Approximately 24 bank accounts in connection to the investigation were frozen and were investigated by the Mercer County Prosecutor's Economic Crime Unit. Additionally, information obtained during Operation 8-Ball directly linked 3H block members, Tizer Hamilton, Treason Thompson and Darnell Davis, to a double murder. The killing on August 9, 2020, was a calculated execution committed by three accused gang members who stalked the victims after one of them disrespected their gang in a social media post, authorities said. The victims. William Arisery and Julius Vargas. After William Arisery and Julius Vargas were killed, members of Trenton's H Block gang discussed the killings on social media and specifically mentioned Arisery disrespecting the gang in a prior posting. Gang members also taunted and threatened Arisery and Vargas's family and friends. Arisery and Vargas were gunned down at about 7.30 a.m. on Center Street in South Trenton. 
Police officers found Arizri dead in the street and Vargas wounded inside a corner store. Vargas died at a city hospital. Investigators found 24 bullet casings. Security cameras that captured the attack showed a black Chrysler 300 circling the area and then park, authorities said. The occupants watched the victims for several minutes as they stood on the corner with others, authorities said. The Chrysler then pulled up to the corner and two gunmen wearing black ski masks emerged, authorities said. They ran toward Arizri and Vargas while firing, authorities said. Arizri ran into the street and a gunman chased him while shooting. When Arizri falls to ground after suffering a gunshot wound, they both continue to shoot at him as he lays on the ground the prosecutor's office said following the shooting. Detectives say Hamilton and Thompson were the gunmen and Davis was the driver. The vehicle fled the area but witnesses saw it and described it to police. The Chrysler 300 was reported stolen in Bensalem, Pennsylvania the week before the shooting, and detectives later found that an automated license plate reader camera in the area of Pennington Avenue and Reservoir Street in Trenton captured the vehicle there on August 4. Arrest warrants for the three defendants were obtained in October 2020, and search warrants were also executed at several locations, which led to the recovery of several weapons. At their respective trials in December 2022 and September 2023, Thompson and Hamilton were found guilty by Mercer County juries on all counts of the indictment, including two counts of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose, and unlawful possession of a handgun. They were sentenced to 60 years in prison. As we stated, G. Skino had been fighting the May 2018 murder charge and an October 2019 attempt murder charge. Let's talk about those situations. On May 30, 2018, Trenton police responded to the 900 block of East State Street just after 12.30 a.m. after the shot spotter gunshot detection system activated for multiple gunshots. Upon arrival, police located an Audi parked on the street with more than 20 bullet strikes. 19-year-old Kyler Fowler was inside of the vehicle with a gunshot wound to the head. He was transported to the hospital where he died a short time later. A second shooting victim was located at the hospital. The 16-year-old black male, who was struck in the leg, was treated and released. Four men were charged with murder, attempted murder, aggravated assault and weapons offenses. One of them, G. Skino, who was already detained in the Mercer County Correction Center. Isaac Fisher and Justin Malkin, also charged, were already incarcerated at the Garden State Youth Correctional Facility. Anyway, the fourth suspect in the Fowler murder was a 19-year-old, and he was being held at the Hudson County Correction Center. Fowler was a basketball player at Nottingham High School from 2015 to 2017, and he enjoyed studying physics. An aspiring rapper, known on Facebook as Trait Wiz, described Fowler as his boy from the sandbox. They attended preschool and elementary school together and remained inseparable over the years. There'd be few days when Twiz didn't wake up to a call from Fowler. But they weren't together when the shooting happened. Wrong time, wrong place. Trey Twiz was not helpful to authorities in solving Fowler's killing. Detectives meticulously put the pieces together nearly over three years, starting from the day of the murder. They found 18 shell casings from three weapons and soon tracked down surveillance that captured the alleged killer's getaway vehicle, a red Nissan's Terra speeding away from the scene. Three hours later, the SUV was discovered torched on the 500 block of Roebling Avenue. Police learned this Terra was stolen from the 1000 block of South Clinton a day before the homicide, according to the affidavit. Footage from the area showed Malkin setting this Terra on fire and then getting into another vehicle. Detectives identified the driver of that car, who confirmed picking up Malkin. Malkin was charged with theft and arson and admitted to receiving stolen property in December 2019. He had been lodged at the Garden State Youth Correctional Facility on the theft and a weapons charge since being sentenced. Authorities found 40 caliber and 9mm shell casings after getting a search warrant for the stolen's terror. Shells were examined by the New Jersey State Police Crime Lab, which ballistically matched them to ones from the murder scene, the affidavit says. Investigators lifted a fingerprint belonging to Jammer Johnson, then 21, from the South Clinton car burglary scene, the affidavit says. While being interrogated, Johnson denied involvement in Fowler's killing, but implicated Fisher as an accomplice in the car theft. He told detectives that Fisher, now 21 of Trenton, was driving this terror after it was lifted. 
Fisher wasn't helpful to detectives and immediately asked for an attorney. He later pleaded guilty to third-degree burglary in May 2019. Another individual, identified only by the initials MB, was charged in this terror theft and implicated Fisher and Johnson, according to the affidavit. MB, who was 17 years old at the time, denied having anything to do with the murder. Investigators caught a big break when a cooperating witness came forward saying G. Skino, Fisher and Malkin and the unnamed fourth suspect openly talked about the killing a day after it happened. The hero cooperator told detectives that G. Skino was so giddy thinking he was unloading on Trey Twizzy that he started shooting too early, the affidavit says. They talked about how they saw the Audi belonging to Trey Twizzy, their intended target. They saw someone sitting in the driver's seat, approach the Audi from South Cook Avenue, and shot up the car. They also discussed how, after the shooting, they stashed and burned their car. The witness pinpointed which weapons two of the gunmen were holding. Malkin allegedly had the 9mm, while a suspect whose name was blacked out from the affidavit was armed with a 40 caliber piece, records show. Anyway, in the months after the murder of Fowler, his friend, Trey Twizzy, would get arrested when a gun was found in the vehicle he was riding in. As we stated, Trey Twizzy is a rapper from Trenton. He represent the Twin Towers, or KB Towers. Kind of reminds you of RPT in the Bronx if you are familiar with that building. Some years ago, SGFDTV captured the TBK cookout. TBK stands for Twiz, Blizz and Kyler, in honor of their fallen members. Their allies are the Five Guys, also known as North 25, the Wilbur Section, and 200 Marty Boys. Captured in this video of the TBK cookout was Trey Twizzy and others, such as Young Baby. Young Baby reps 116 and Walnut. You might be familiar with Young Baby's story, as it has been featured on different platforms including Vlad TV. Right now, the search for the trigger man in a shooting at a Trenton gas station. Police said a teenager and a man were wounded in a shooting at a gas station in New Jersey's capital. Gunfire rang out around 2.05 a.m. at the Shell gas station on the 800 block of Greenwood Avenue. The gas station has historically been a violent scene, with at least three people murdered there since 2016 and several others wounded over the years. Police say the 17-year-old was hit several times and was in critical but stable condition following emergency surgery. A 36-year-old was wounded in the hand and is in stable condition. At least 40 bullets were fired during the shooting, according to sources. Police were there investigating whether the shooting was linked to another shooting that Wednesday over on the 600 block of Cass Street. The 17-year-old that was hit several times turned out to be Young Baby. According to Young Baby, he was hit with 35 out of the 40 bullets. Yup, he's alive to talk about it. Young Baby is also a rapper and tells his story through his music. His videos have amassed hundreds of thousands of views, including one titled on YouTube as Back Then, which has over 2 million views. G. Skino, Joseph Asen, and Courtney Stafford were arrested and charged with attempted murder, aggravated assault and weapons offenses in connection with the Shell gas station shooting. Faison also was hit with drug offenses after cops found him with crack and heroin. As for Courtney, she was no stranger to crime, having had run-ins with the law prior to the situation. Back in 2013, she was arrested in connection to a purse-snatching incident. Guess them charges didn't stick because G. Skino would be back on the street soon. G. Skino and Young Baby were once cool before relationships deteriorated and people were forced to choose sides. Yup, that's them together. Just for some history though, the Shell gas station abuts the Liberty 3 laundromat where pill-pushing Grammy Udian McMillan, 37-year-old Daryl Parker, and a 15-year-old teenager were involved in the heinous execution-style slaying of 21-year-old Giovanni Fanfan earlier that year. And it's the same gas station where Avian Perry, 28, was gunned down in May 2018. Police found him inside the Shell gas station and was taken to Capitol Health Regional Medical Center where he later died. Police sources said at the time Perry was shot more than 12 times, initially struck outside a store attached to the gas station, and then ran inside the gas station with the shooter in pursuit. The suspect, never apprehended, stood over Perry while he was on the ground and shot him several more times, according to law enforcement sources. In December 2016, three people were shot, two killed, in the gas station parking lot. Cordrees Robinson, 21, and 16-year-old Jody Twistale died in a blaze of bullets. 
A third 19-year-old male victim survived the bloody gas station shooting. In 2017, a jury convicted Stephen Copeland of armed robbery and aggravated assault for firing five shots at Ralph Jaber Anderson at Point Blank Range January 18, 2014, outside the Shell gas station. Copeland then rifled thought the victim's pockets and ran away. He was tracked down 10 days later by U.S. Marshals. The victim, paralyzed from the waist down, testified against Copeland at the trial. That's a tough corner a police or said. Not sure what the consequences were in connection to the young baby shooting, but Joseph Asen and Courtney Stafford would be back on the streets in no time. This is apparent because their names would come up for crimes later down the line. Same for Mulkin, as he would also be back on the streets, only to allegedly engage in more violence. For example, Courtney was arrested in connection with a January 2021 shooting near the 300 block of Gardner Avenue. A house was shot up and a black vehicle was riddled by bullets. Stafford was charged with attempted murder because several people were in the home during the drive-by, though none were injured. Police used a ring camera to help identify Stafford, who was a jilted ex-lover of one of the victims. As for G. Skino, he would be back in trouble. On November 9, 2022 at approximately 9.56 p.m., Lawrence police officers responded to a fight in progress inside the Quick Check, located at 303 Brunswick Circle Extension. On-scene investigation revealed a 25-year-old victim was assaulted inside the store and his cell phone and cash were stolen during the altercation. After the robbery, the suspects exited the store and fled the area with the stolen property. The victim suffered serious bodily injury during the physical altercation. Through the investigation, the suspects were identified as G. Skino and Anthony Bethia. The incident stemmed from a verbal argument between the victim and suspects days prior in Trenton. On December 8, 2022, Anthony Bethia was taken into custody and charged with robbery, second degree, aggravated assault, second degree, and theft, third degree. A week and change later, G. Skino was taken into custody and hit with the same charges. He do some time in the slammer, but has since been released and creating music. In one interview, he admits to committing the shooting of young baby. Somebody got hit up like 30 times? Was that the reason why you went to jail? Like 2020, I got locked up for that shit, yeah. Nigga got hit up 35 times. You know, I wasn't really <laughs> counting. But they blamed you, though? Yeah, they blamed me. I ain't gonna lie, I did that. I ain't gonna lie, I did that. I ain't gonna lie, I did that. You would think it ends here, but because we mentioned other members. Let's talk about what they ended up getting into. On Easter Sunday, April 9, 2023, Trenton police responded to a shot spotter notification reporting multiple shots fired in the area of Lamerton and Federal Streets. Responding officers located a man who they say had been shot in the driver's seat of his Park 2010 Infiniti G37. Authorities say the vehicle and the victim, who was later identified as Joss Tolentino, 23, of Trenton, were struck multiple times by gunfire. Tolentino was rushed to Capital Health Regional Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. In the course of the investigation, homicide detectives reviewed surveillance footage from nearby businesses and Trenton City cameras from the time of the shooting. Officials say the cameras captured a black 2007 Toyota 4Runner, later identified as a stolen vehicle, cross over Lamerton Street and drive up to the victim's vehicle. Three men, Faison, Malkin, and Utsi, were captured exiting the runner and approaching the victim's car with firearms. After shooting at the driver's seat area of the victim's car, police say the three men returned to the 4Runner and fled the scene. The stolen 4Runner was later found by detectives parked at a vacant property on Edgewood Avenue. Surveillance video from that area shows the 4Runner drove directly from the shooting to Edgewood Avenue, where the vehicle was abandoned. For more than four years, authorities say there has been an ongoing feud between H-Block gang members and individuals associated with the South Trenton area, specifically individuals associated with Lamerton Street, which is where the victim lived. The ongoing feud has included murders, shootings, and disputes on social media. Detectives learned that leading up to the murder, there was a dispute on social media between the victim and family members of H-Block gang members. This dispute led to H-Block member, Faison, insulting the victim and Lamerton Street associates on Instagram. Shortly before the victim was murdered, investigators say he shared a story on Instagram in response to one of Faison's comments. As for Courtney Stafford, on August 29, 2023, she was busted by a patrolman at the Express Inn Motel on State Highway 33 34th. 
Stafford faced charges including loitering for the purpose of engaging in prostitution, possession of ecstasy, and unlawful possession of prescription drugs. She was processed and released on a summons. But this about wraps this one up though. We soon come back to Trenton and Jersey in general, because there is a lot of newer generation things happening that we haven't spoken about. Even as far as this story, there are other crews that are intertwined with what's going on as a whole. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.